Okay, got some pretty pictures here. We're in the, kind of the next couple slides. So what I've done here is um, we've I've got a little app, an app that kind of simulates binomial random variables. So here you notice the number of trials is 10, n is 10, probability of success is 8. So this actually is our free throw example. And it basically just drew a bar graph. Um, I guess it's a history, I'm not a bar graph, of the probability for each outcome. So what it's saying here is that, you know, this column right here, okay, is you've made nine free throws. So what's the probability of that happening? Well, it looks like it's about, you know, if you go over here, it's about, I don't know, you know, point two something maybe. Um, and it did that for every possible outcome. It's not surprisingly, if you're taking 10 free throws and you're going to make 80% of them, it's likely you're going to make six or seven, right, six or seven or eight or nine or maybe all 10. There's a pretty unlikely chance you're going to make five, and then probably you're going to make, miss, you know, almost all of them is pretty low. Now, this kind of curve here, what they're attempting to do is they're kind of trying to relate this to the idea of a normal curve, which we're going to talk about in a second. But I just wanted you to see that, you know, here we can draw a, this is actually a, um, probability distribution histogram for every possible uh, outcome down here. Really what, what they should have done is they should have said here's zero, here's one, two, three, four, this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, right? You know, and the bars here are just so small you can't see them. Well, I just was playing with this app a little bit. Um, you notice now I just changed n to be, n is still ten. Now this person's a horrible free throw shooter. They only make 15 percent of their free throws. So now they're probably making zero is much higher, probably making one, two, three, four, five, and there's almost no chance they're going to make anything more than that. Notice this is calculating for us, this right here is the mean of x, right? On average, the person will make 1.5 free throws. Now, the person cannot make exactly 1.5 free throws because uh, x is discrete, um, but it is okay for the mean of x to be a decimal. So what I've done now is I have uh, increased the number of trials. So now we're not shooting 10 free throws, you're shooting 20 free throws. And notice the mean now is 16, okay? It's n times p, 20 times 0.8. But what I wanted you to notice is doesn't it sort of look like now this graph fits the normal curve a little bit better? In other words, the histogram does a better job of fitting this kind of red curve. That's kind of where we're going, is as the number of trials increases, wouldn't you expect the bars to get thinner and actually do a better job of fitting this normal curve? And that's what you're going to see on the next page. Because here what I've done is I've increased the number of trials to 75. And now when you look at it, you say, well, geez, this histogram looks almost identical to the normal curve. It's not identical, but is it reasonable to say that this histogram approximates a normal distribution? I think most of us would say yes, right? So this leads to a really key idea. You can approximate a binomial distribution as a normal distribution if, and then here's just kind of a rule of thumb that we're going to talk about. The rule of thumb is you can, you're allowed to do this when n times p is greater than or equal to 10 and n times q is greater than or equal to 10. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, it turns out that in the old days, um, when people didn't have the binomial functions on your calculator, to do problems like this by hand would be just a huge pain. So this was kind of important later on. And actually, it's going to come up a lot in, like, chapters 10, 11, and 12. So here's our last example. It's kind of a similar example. Now we've got the person shooting free throws, our same person. But now, instead of shooting 10 free throws, they're shooting 75 free throws. They still make 80%. We want to know what's the probability they make less than 55 free throws. I'm going to do this problem twice, once using the binomial formulas and once using the uh, normal approximation that we just learned. So let's do it the kind of old-fashioned way first, the binomial way. So this person, we want to know what's the probability they make less than 55 free throws. Notice I rewrote that. If you made less than 55 free throws, it's less than or equal to 54 free throws because you can't make anything between 54 and 55. It's discrete. Well, for a binomial variable, it's just binomial CDF, 75.854, right? This is just NPK, and you get here's the answer. It's about a 6% chance you make fewer, less than 55 free throws. I guess I should say fewer. Um, 
Now in green, I'm going to do the exact same question, but I'm going to try to do it not using binomial CDF. I'm going to instead use the uh, normal approximation. So the first thing is, am I allowed to use the normal approximation? Well, I'm only allowed to use the normal approximation if, this, if n times p is greater than or equal to 10 and n times q is greater than or equal to 10. Well, is that true? Well, n is 75, p is 0.8. So is 75 times 0.8 greater than or equal to 10? Well, it turns out it's 60. So yes, 60 is greater than 10. Is 75 times 0.2 greater than or equal to 10? This is n times q. Well, it turns out 75 times 0.2 is 15. So yes, 60 is greater than 10 and 15 is greater than 10. So I just showed that, yes, now I can approximate this binomial as normal. Now I can use the normal approximation to the binomial. And let's, let's go do that. Well, so now I can actually draw this as a normal curve. And now I have to figure out what is the mean and standard deviation, because I need that for normal CDF. Well, now you see why we learn mean and standard deviation. This is using the formula n times p. So... 75 times 0.8 is 60. The standard deviation of x is the formula the square root of npq. So I crank that all out and I get about 3.46. Then I drew this normal curve, what we've seen before. Okay, notice the mean is 60, the standard deviation is 3.46. Remember the question I was asking you before is what's the probability that x is less than 55? Now, I'm not doing it as a binomial. I'm approximating the binomial as normal, which means, hey, look, I can go back to my good old friend, normal CDF. There it is. And now it's just normal CDF works exactly the same way. I want to know less than 55, so I shade it up here. 0 to 55. The mean is 60. Right there's the mean being 60. Standard deviation is 3.46. Okay, I did that there. And I get about 7.5%. Now you may say, well, wait a second, hold on. This number, wouldn't we expect it to be the same as the number when we did it the, the other way? Well, remember, this is an approximation. Um, I believe we got about 6% doing it the actual binomial way, and we got about 7.5% doing it the normal approximation way. The reason they're not exactly the same is actually it comes up to remember that this actually is discrete. So did I should I have put 54? Five here or 54 here, well, it turns out a normal distribution is uh, continuous, but a binomial distribution is discrete. So the fact that you're a little bit off comes from the fact of really it's somewhere between 54 and 55. There's a whole big topic on whether you should put 54 here, 55 here, or maybe some of the people put 54.5. Uh, um, but the fact that you're a little bit off comes from that. But it's really beyond the scope of this class. So for right now, this is a good enough approximation. And I think that wraps up uh, section 8.1.